Hello! Today we're going to go over how to choose between the two verbs that are to be in Spanish. That is ser and estar. So, as you know, we use both ser and estar to say to be. As a result, we have the scenario where I am can be soy or I am could be estoy. These are not interchangeable in Spanish. In fact, they have very specific uses. I'm going to be giving you the very simplest of ways to choose between ser and estar in this video. All right, so we have a little expression in Spanish that is, tell me where you are and how you are, everything else is ser. I'm going to elaborate on that, but here's how it works in practice. So. The first version, dime donde y cómo estás. Tell me where you are. So we use estar when we're talking about position or location. Here are some examples. Los libros están en la mochila. Location. El lápiz está debajo de los libros. Position, under the books. La escuela está en Nueva Jersey. Again, location. So, dime donde estás is estar. All right, next one. Remember, dime donde y cómo estás. Otherwise, how you are. And when we're talking about how you are, we're referring to things like your emotions, your health, and whether or not you're alive. We'll come back to that idea in just a second. So, examples. Miguel está feliz. Emotions. Las chicas están enfermas. Health. El insecto está muerto. The insect is dead. All right. Here is one thing that's really important to discuss, and that is this fallacy, this wrong information that you will hear a lot that ser is for permanent things. And we'll think, well, death is permanent. Yes, but really when we're talking about conditions, even though that's permanent, it's still a condition. And if it's a condition, we're going to use estar. Okay, so that leads us to our next thing, our next use of estar, which is in fact conditions. Okay, conditions of things. And when you're trying to determine if you're looking at a condition versus something else, the thing to ask yourself is, is this an inherent characteristic? So condition versus inherent characteristic. So when we're talking about conditions, most of the time we're talking about things being broken, whether or not someone is looking particularly nice today, uh, if something is at the wrong temperature. All right, so let's give you some examples. So when we're talking about conditions, we're talking about things like la computadora está rota, the computer is broken. It is not an inherent characteristic of computers to be broken. You wouldn't buy it that way. This computer, something happened to it, it's now in pieces. All right, next, Gonzalo está guapo hoy. Now, this is again a condition. So I'm not saying that Gonzalo um, made this miraculous transition from being ugly to being good looking, but rather Gonzalo spruced himself up. Maybe he uh, got a haircut or maybe he's wearing a suit. So, for example, if your team is wearing a suit when you go to class because it's your psych, you might have your Spanish teacher say, hey, estás guapo hoy. All right. And they're not saying that you are not normally good looking, but they're saying, hey, you look extra nice. This is the condition that you came to class in today. All right. Another one that's condition is things being the wrong temperature. Mi pizza está fría. Okay, my pizza's cold. I ordered it, it was hot, and then I let it sit and it cooled down. All right, sometimes it's helpful to look at ser in terms of contrast. All right, so when we do that, uh, first of all, the key thing is that everything else that is not where you are, how you are, and the condition of things is going to be ser. All right, included in that everything else is location of events, or another way of saying it is the idea of something occurring, and those inherent characteristics that we're talking about. So let's do a couple of examples to clarify these uses. 
All right. So location of events. So el baile. El baile es en la cafetería. This is an event. This is not a thing. Los conciertos son en el estadio. Or la clase es en el aula de español. Okay, so we're talking of events. And events, we're going to be using ser. All right, now let's talk about inherent characteristics. Okay, another way of thinking about inherent characteristics is that ser functions as an equal sign. So I can say pizza equals a hot food. Pizza es una comida caliente. There is no situation where the default for pizza is cold. In that case, it would just be raw bread with shredded cheese on top. That's not a pizza. All right. Or inherent characteristics, Silvia es una persona feliz. I'm not saying that Silvia is happy today. I'm saying that in general, her personality is happy and cheerful. Okay, Silvia es. Next one, el autobús es un vehículo. The bus is a vehicle. All right, again, you can see very clearly that I could use the equal sign there. El autobús equals vehículo. Let's take a moment to go over once more the difference between inherent characteristics and conditions of things just to make sure that this is clear. El café es una bebida caliente. All right. In the times before iced coffee, coffee only came in one temperature and that was hot. Now, if I were to go and get coffee and put it on my desk and let it sit there, then my coffee would become cold. Mi café está frío. That is not an inherent characteristic of the coffee. Instead, this is the condition of my particular coffee after I let it sit there for a while. Las ventanas son de vidrio. The windows are of glass. Okay, it is inherent characteristic of windows to be made of glass, generally speaking. All right, versus las ventanas están rotas. The windows are broken. Again, it is not an inherent characteristic for windows to be broken. However, it is a condition. Miguel es guapo. I can say that Miguel is a good-looking young man. And I can say Sara está guapa hoy. So I'm not saying that Sara usually isn't good-looking, but rather today she dressed extra nice, or she did her hair in a different way, or she put a little extra... Uh, attention into her appearance. Okay, so again, this is the difference between inherent characteristics, aka equal signs, versus condition of things. All right, so let's review. We use a star for where you are, for how you are, and that includes whether or not you're dead, and the condition of things, which is different from the inherent characteristics of something. All right, Let's take about two minutes to practice. So what I would like you to do is to pause the video and look at each sentence and decide whether or not, given the situation, you would use ser or estar, and then conjugate either ser or estar in Spanish. So go ahead and pause and then hit play when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, vámonos. Miguel is tired. This is how Miguel is. So this is esta. Silvia and Juana are from Sevilla. This is not where they are or how they are or condition. Therefore, this is ser. The books are on the table. This is where they are. So estar, están. Chicken is a bird. This is not where it is, how it is, or a condition. This is inherent characteristic. Therefore, it is ser, es. The party is at my house. This is tricky because it is location, but it's an event. So la fiesta es. All right, let's do the same thing. Once again, pause the video, conjugate the correct form of ser and estar, and then press play when you're ready to check your responses. All right, the pencil is broken. This is not where it is, how it is, but it is condition. It is not inherent characteristic of pencils to be broken. Therefore, we are going to use esta. The cockroaches are dead. This is not where you are, but it is how you are, and dead is estar. So the cockroaches están. K 
cake is a dessert. This is not where you are, how you are, or a condition, therefore it is ser. You could also say cake equals dessert. The dog is in the garden. This is where it is, therefore esta. Dogs are mammals. This is not where it is, how it is, or condition, therefore los perros son mamíferos. All right. I hope this video gave you a better sense of when you use ser and when you use estar. ¡Hasta luego!